Hello, Beat Baseball World. Welcome back to the Beat Ball Blue Show, another edition. But this will be a little change of pace from what we normally do. First, let me tell you, I am Neil D A W G, and I am joined with my partner in life, Seth Bam Bam Clark. <laughs> Welcome in, Seth Dog. Oh, I like that. The bass, the bam, bam. That's, you know, so that's bam, 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 bam. That's what that's you're saying. Right. You know, coming down the street, bam, bam. <laughs> <boy>. <laughs> so, uh, you know, for a long time, because we, we always post the show on Sunday nights, and for a long time, I've had an idea because this Sunday will be February 14th, Valentine's Day. And, you know, uh, with beat baseball being a co ed sport, and we have uh, so many like couples in our sport, you know, the player, you know, uh, the people who are married to both play or maybe one pitches and one plays or whatever. But we, you know, we have a lot of like a uh, couple interaction on our teams. And I thought it would be really cool for the Valentine's Day show to um have, have have some of the couples from around the league come on and do i don't know like a newlywed type oh, game have them yeah. compete against each other right. um i know lion michaels is uh throwing out the idea of like i don't know kind of like a, a tell all the dirty secrets about their spouses kind of show which you know might not <laughs> i don't know i, I would kind of like that um uh, but you know also monday um fe- will be february 15th it's the president's Day weekend, and uh, our our family, the National Beat Baseball Association, uh, lost a, a big one in my opinion, uh, a, a, an iconic figure with our sport, uh, Doc Ed Bradley, uh, who who was a part of the. Uh, all the Houston teams over the years, but he also served as our president. Um, and he, he's been a Jim Quinn award winner. He's been a hall of famer. Um, so I, I, I've asked a couple members that, that came up with him um, with the Houston franchise and been around him in the MBBA for a long time to join us. So we could do a true uh, MBBA president's day tribute. <clears throat> So I'd like to bring in Mr. Michael Garrett first, who uh, uh, past MBBA president himself. Michael, welcome to the show. Thank you, Neil. Yeah, and Mike. Hey. Big Mike, my teammate. Yeah, yeah, my teammate. yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Seth, uh, Seth never would have had the, his second career in, in Houston if people like Mike and Doc didn't want him to. <laughs> we would have got his chance. <laughs> we also have another one of his uh, Doc's old teammates, Mr. Ronnie Bruns. Hey, Ronnie, welcome in, my friend. Hey, Neil. Hey, Seth. Been a long hey. time since I've talked to either one of you guys. And so long that Seth didn't even remember me. <laughs> yeah, I was you know, I mean, that, I was, that I was a good defensive player, but um, Seth never hit the ball close enough for me to be able <laughs> to, to get it because I played ball. up front. You yeah. know, I was gonna say you must be a short guy. <laughs> yeah, I was short. Well, Doc and I played short a lot, and uh, you know that that was our we we were pretty good at at covering. The short field, anything 90, we felt we had a feeling that anything 90 feet that was, uh, you know, up to the 90 feet from the plate, uh, it was on the ground, had to be fielded. And we, we got most of them. So, you know, we got most of them. Hey, that is what we call fundamental fun. The fundamentals of beat ball, man. We try to drive that into people's heads all the time. You got to get the short balls. <laughs> if you yeah. don't get the short balls, you will not win. <laughs> so, Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, I, I, I agree with everything you, you've said. It's funny to me, though, because, I mean, I, I know, like, with the dogs, you know what I mean? It was an absolute rule that nothing on the ground in, uh, on the infield should be a run for anybody. And, and you let, we've let the team down when it happened, but I, I don't remember Houston putting a big priority on defense, Ronnie. You guys just, I didn't even know if you guys went out on the field. It was just get the best pitcher you could and keep knocking the, the crowd out of the ball. Well, now, come on, man. You know, in, eight, in 87 in Ithaca, we beat you guys, 
And the real whooping we put on, we put on, uh, well, it wasn't a whooping, but just they were so surprised, was the old uh, East Bay team with uh, Slick and Kim yeah, and yeah. Uh, I don't know who else was on. And we had three, no, two girls, two ladies on our team at that time. Wasn't one named and Rose or Rosemary? Rosie, yeah. Yeah, Rose. Rosie. I remember Rosie. And uh, uh, Mamie. Um, God, who was she married to then? Uh Mamie Townsend. Townsend, yeah. And now that lady, she, she played with the original Houston teams. Well, in, in 78 when we started, we had three teams in Houston. Doc was on the, what the team, the Pasadena team, they called themselves the Roaring Lions. And uh, then he well, he went with, uh, we had a sort of an all-star team for our first World Series in 78. And in 79, the teams, you know, split up again. And the, they allowed the city champs, which was us, the bombers, the bio bombers. And Doc went with us to Wichita and actually got a couple of at bats. And Michael, as he has always been able to do, find the good players on another team and sort of steal them. <laughs> and that's what <laughs> that's what he basically did. Did we had two guys that we wanted to play with uh, Houston with our team, the bombers. Doc was one and Steve Kerr was another one. And, um, you know, Doc played with us for the first time as official in, in 80. And we played together ever since I quit playing in 96. And, uh, you know, I've known Doc ever since then. So but, let's, let's, uh, cause we kind of, we, you know, jumped in a little uh, bit ahead of time. So let's, uh, yeah. uh and, and yeah, um, I mean, I, you did kind of cover that because Michael had told me like it was around 79, 80 when you guys all, I, I wasn't sure. I, I didn't know uh, then that you were involved there, Ronnie. So yeah, um, you, you guys all uh, started playing together with, with Doc Bradley in, in what, 79, 80 then? Yeah, yeah, 78. Actually, I, I was trying to remember if he came in 78, but I don't think he did. I think he first played in 79. And... Of course, Michael and I were on the team, the Houston, which was the best Houston team. Um, <laughs> you know, the and that's the other thing. I love that you call us city champions. Like, who thought of, like, enough people going on in one city to where you had your own city Yeah, champion? well, that's probably the reason we were able to go to the World Series in 78 was because there weren't many cities that had – now, Chicago had a bunch going. They had several teams, I think. But – it's the Houston team. We played, we actually played a league. We had, we played uh, two round robins, you know, which meant we played, each one of us played four games, yeah, we, I guess. We, we did the same thing here in Northern California. And so once we submitted the fact to the NBBA that, you know, hey, we've been playing a league because there was no tournaments or anything to um, – determined who got to go to the world series it was just like whoever got notoriety out there and we got our name out there with the guys of the nbba uh the guys from phoenix bill gibney and oh who was the guy charlie vasallo i think was the president of the nbba at that time and so we got invited to go to the world series in uh phoenix of course there were and so teams. that's how we got to go but there was there michael there were only eight teams I was yeah, ask yeah. back then I was ask who that, could yeah. go to the series. Yeah, you, you had to be invited. And Texas, the Texas teams, and that's where Doc was really involved too, we sprung up so fast. I mean, once beat ball hit Texas, it exploded. It literally exploded. We had There were three teams in Houston, three in San Antonio, and Fort Worth had a team, and later Dallas had a team, and then Austin had a team. So we would have Texas tournaments right. in the middle of the summer just with Texas teams, you know. And that wasn't very common back in 78 through 81, 82. In fact, in 81, Houston hosted the World Series, and our team couldn't go because we finished third in our state tournament. Wow. So, yeah. <laughs> and, and the way you guys said it, so only when the NBBA first started the World Series, there was only uh, like eight teams allowed total in the tournament. Is that what I'm hearing? I right. think so. Right. It, I think 
If I remember, I Michael, remember do you when when I can't remember when it became an open tournament. Eighty two. Okay. Eighty two. That was the first year we went to Minneapolis. Oh, you know, with yeah. the uh, with uh, John Ross Scott, everything you went know, with General Mills. Yeah, put so a lot of had, sponsorship so, so in. So you had regional tournaments all over the place, and yeah, uh, you yeah. Know, what was the... I mean, I think there were some regional tournaments. Uh, like how how I'm, did the MBBA decide all? Yeah, how did you? Yeah, what was the selection process? Well, I don't really, I'm, I don't really remember. I mean. Yeah. Yeah. Michael, you do, do you know Michael? No, no. I think Ronnie hit on it earlier. There, there was a selection process. Process. The you know, or you you got invited. Really, yeah. Uh, we had right. uh, we had a lady, uh, Holly Clark. Some kind of way, she met uh, Bill Gib- Gibney and uh, who was the other guy, Ronnie? Alan Woody. Alan Woody from Phoenix. She, who, she knew them, and she got them actually to come to to Texas. We we actually ended up in in Austin and teach us the game of beat baseball, the way it was some, being played by the Phoenix and the Minnesota people. Yeah, and some kind of way she finagled us to get to that seventy eight tournament, and uh, we, we we won't say how she finagled it, but. Sunday being Valentine's Day, we'll give you a clue. <laughs> well, we we got we got there, <laughs> and uh, and we also you know got, I got I got just, just I got to interject. You know what the I mean you know I don't want like you guys talk about seventy eight and I'm always blown away. It's like, God, I was five. <laughs> I, I, I yeah. can see in seventy eight. You know Neil can see. I believe in seventy eight. You right? know what what stood out to me when Michael told me uh, uh, you know on the phone yesterday uh, the other day that they started playing seventy nine is that's when I lost my eyesight. I mean, <laughs> oh wow! I I, wow. Uh, I I it was about a month before I turned eleven when my accident happened and 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 that was May of nineteen seventy nine. And it's so like kind of cool for me that like while I was going through all that, which is what led me to the sport, you know, you guys were all coming together and like building the yeah. sport at that time. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's true. I mean, we were building the sport, and of course, John Ross, uh, you know, from Minnesota, basically came up with the the, the basic rules uh, of the game, and and Minnesota. I think it was the Minneapolis BSF, which stands for Braille Sports Foundation, and the St. Paul Gorillas were two of the <laughs> big teams there. I love that name. And in, in San Antonio in 77 or 76, I think we went to the third World Series, but they sent two teams before we even got our team organized in Houston. Well, I, then, I didn't even know anything about it until, until – <clears throat> Holly invited us out and you know we had all these players and and so she said well why don't we split up the teams Hmm. and of course you know I was the captain of the first team so and and I guess and I started drafting and my first draft pick was Ronnie (laughs) yeah now Michael Michael told me years later um the reason he drafted me and cause I, you know, I was a, well, back in the old days, I was a pretty good player. I was considered a good player, but back in the old days, hitting was a lot easier or getting hits. I'll say was a lot easier than what it is now. If you made contact back in the first four or five years, you know, to the yeah. early mid eighties, you could score most of the time if you had any speed or if you hit the ball far enough. Right. But once people got the idea of how to play defense and they honed their defense, and then once we went to six players instead of five, and when was that, 83? Yeah, you know, I'll, I'll, that, that's what I was going to ask, you know, not to cut that. What were the rules yeah. you guys had back in the – in the in the in the olden days, of, uh, after we after we get these, the rules, we, we're we we're not doing a doc trivia. We're really just going like the history of the NBA right now. So yeah. let, well, let, Doc was involved. No, doc I, was involved yeah. in a lot of it. I, I want to get to the, yeah, because doc, doc had a lot to do with all of that. Okay. But I wanted to get. I wanted to tell a couple of those stories. Ronnie, tell the the the, the seventy nine story. You know, but 
Doc hanging out the window and all. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> <laughs> we had we had. I won't say. Well, Bam Bam, he may not remember. He may not remember because there were times when a tremendous amount of liquid refreshment was imbibed by all. <laughs> And a B ball team, I have a team. Yes, yeah, never heard of any blind athletes drinking before. That's, that's news to me. Well, I can Go tell ahead. you another story. Another story about that too. Um, we uh, in Texas, they had just lowered the drinking age from 21 to 18. Well, the 79 tournament was in Wichita, Kansas, but they you had to be 21 to drink in Wichita. All right. So. And my dad, my mom and dad were involved. My dad was a pitcher and back a backup pitcher and catcher, and my mom was a spotter. And my dad says, "Well, hell, our, our, we can't keep." We had several guy, people on our team on, who were not 21 yet. He said, "Well, we're going to have our tire guys are going to be able to drink." And so he took a contribution from everybody, and we set up our own bar in my mom and dad's room. <laughs> we found out that the Sioux Falls team was right below their team headquarters was right below my parents room so we you know we did all kinds of crazy things we went down and knocked on their door you know and we were going to play them the next day next morning and so oh, we're going to kick y'all you know you know what and they got to the point to where they weren't opening their door then they weren't answering their phone so <clears throat> we got a somebody made a sign and they hung the sign down to the window right below my parents' window. But of course, most of the blind people, I mean, they couldn't see it and the sighted people weren't looking. So my dad said to Doc, he said, Doc, if you get hung out the window, could you reach your cane? Could you tap on their window with your cane? Sure. <laughs> so my dad grabbed one leg and our pitcher grabbed his other leg oh and <laughs> held him down there. <laughs> <laughs> and, I mean, it's, it's a wonder, you know, I mean, I, I don't know what kind of shoes he had on. If anybody. he'd had loafers, he might have been dropped, you know. But we hung him down there, and he tapped on the window with his cane, and it was all crazy. But, you know, it was all good, clean fun. We didn't do anything. And, uh, Except that was, hang that was people just, out the we, window. Yeah, right? We, I would yeah. not. I, my, <laughs> my, my lives in mortal danger. One of my well, nephews. That was only five stories. One of my nephews is a fifth story of the of the hotel too. You know. Oh my God! One of my nephews is a firefighter. Firefighter, and I wouldn't trust one of he and one of his colleagues to do that, like <laughs> to hold me. I wouldn't trust any teammate I've ever had to hold me out a window. Yeah. I'll tell you that I wouldn't be here now. They wouldn't let me go. I deserve yeah, it yeah. most of the time. <laughs> So no, hey, hey, about, an, an, answer Seth's question though. Like, that, what, what were the rules you guys were playing? Well, the by rules were, were the rules were were fairly similar. I mean, there were a lot of tweaks to the rules. Of course, when we first learned to play the game, before we went to the rally that they had in Austin, where the Phoenix guys came and a couple of guys from El Paso and taught us the real rules, we were playing. We were trying to play by the old Ralph Rock rules, you know, where the bases were behind the plate. And, you know, it, we, didn't, we weren't even sure how the, the game was being played. When, when we learned the rules, of course, that made, we realized it was a much more aggressive game. But back in those days, the count was five and two, five strikes, yeah. Yeah. two balls. And in 78, uh, we still had two innings. The second and fourth innings were you batted off a tee because, oh, you know. Uh, so <clears throat> you remember that, Michael? Vaguely. <laughs> yeah, we, we hit it off. Of course, I couldn't hit any better off the tee than I did off a pitcher anyway. So, um, But that was the yeah. last year they hit These off the tee. These are hard to hit off. Yeah, I, I, yeah. I, I, I at practices have gone up thinking, it's like, oh, I'll hit to the defense a couple times, like whiff, whiff. Like, you know, it's, like, yeah, it, yeah. It's, it's not easy to hit off a tee when you can't no. see that thing. I've broken a couple But, teams, the, but. the basic rules were the same. You know, um, of course, the field was a little bit. Uh, what you had ninety feet. You had ninety foot bases. Bases. Yeah. And, yeah. Um, you had to get the ball. You know, the, there was nothing different about. You had to get the ball forty feet. You know, to be a fair ball. And the ball hit the and pitcher. There was, it was five a, players. Five. Players. Yeah, only five. Five players. Yeah. But then it got to the point where, and in eighty one, I think it was the ball changed. They couldn't. 
we they quit using um, KPOC for one year, and they were using polystyrene core. Right. And my God, you could hit a ball, and they would yeah, rock they, it out. They there. did that again in the '90s, about the time that you retired, like the '96 yeah. tournament. They're using uh, the polyurethane balls, poly- and, oh, and we are in we are in Austin, Texas, playing <laughs> on like dirt fields, and it's like, man. Yeah. Teams like, like, you know, Austin and Fort Worth, they had these great pitchers who score like 10 runs an inning. It's ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, you know, you oh, talk about boy. the rules and, and, and Doc's influence on the game. Um, um, Doc got ele- I don't remember what year he got elected president. Uh, whenever that was, that was Jim- a question I was wondering. Well, you know, we, uh, we were trying to work up his um, – Obituary, and I know that one term he served for ten years. He served he served five two year terms, then he quit for a while, and then he got reelected again for a, a time. And I don't remember how many years he actually served. <laughs> must and have, there was it must have been like eighty four, eighty five, because I followed him. Yeah, I, that's I, right, you did. I and I, I, I started in ninety four. My my first. Okay. My first tournament was '87, and he was already president. Yeah, yeah, he. I knew he got elected in the mid '80s sometime. But Doc was really, you know, his personality was such that he had a uh, a great ability to motivate people. Uh, of course, he loved I me mean, competitive. You know, any if you guys played against him, he was very much competitive. And the fact that his being a chiropractor. Helped him a lot, and there were a lot of tournaments, even national tournaments, for a time when we had no real organized uh, first aid. So, you know, somebody gets hurt, there's a collision, timeout, and we had to call timeout. There were times when our games were stopped because he because went to another field. To he had to go to another right field there. to help somebody yeah. out. You know, I remember that. Yeah, and uh, he, of course, he, one of the things he was that, the, the the league pre- like in the late. Early '90s, he was the league president. He was the lead medic person for our tournaments. You know, yeah, he, yeah. He wore a lot of hats. He wore a yeah, lot he hats. did. And I was fortunate enough for a time uh, while he was president to be chairman of the rules committee. And I didn't do anything specifically, but Doc was involved, and he got uh, some umpires. Uh, Dan Tracy. I don't know if you any of you guys remember Dan. Oh, yeah. Of course. Uh, um, Never, never heard he, of the guy. Never heard of him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Dan was Dan with Doc's help was responsible for getting the rules because you know a bunch of the rules are written by and I don't mean to be funny but the rules are written by a bunch of blind people you know and they weren't written and Dan was always God you guys got terrible rules you need to write them according to the way baseball rules are written and Dan was real um, helpful in getting that done. You know, with Doc. Is that, what, is that what we used to call the Tracy rules? <laughs> yeah. You know, uh, yeah. I, when, when Dan Tracy first got involved with the MBBA was when I also first got involved with the board. And one of my first board meetings, it was actually before I got elected on the board for the first time in 1989. And I went to the March board meeting. Um, I, you know, kind of, I guess, getting to know people, hoping to, to gather, mm-hmm. gather votes coming into the summer. And that was when Dan Tracy had first gotten involved with the umpires and he wrote this really long, like umpires guide. And yeah, we, yeah, that's and right. it had to that's be right. approved by the, by the board. And my first experience of sitting down at a, at a board meeting outside of the world series was like three hours of going through a check <laughs> Dan Tracy's umpire's guide from beginning to end, man. So that, that, yeah. That oh, yeah. Out. Yeah. It was. It was long. But you know, but uh, I, there I, were a I, lot of good things that 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 came out of that. I mean, it, it just organization and and you know clarity. Now, I uh, I I've considered um, Doc as good a leader as our our league has had. Um, no disrespect to anybody, but I. Uh, and 
it means a lot to me to say that because doc and i didn't even always agree like i you know like mm. in, in board meetings we weren't always like on the same side of arguments and we really like knocked our heads against each other at times and, and i have no doubt that i frustrated the man uh, you know we i think we frustrated each other because again we, we didn't always agree on stuff but I still came away from it feeling like he was a really strong leader for the MBBA. And, yeah, it, yeah. and his second term, I think, started around 03 or somewhere in that range. And even though it wasn't me that called Doc, um, I actually, I, I was an MBBA board member at that time. And I, I felt like our league like was hurting at the time with leadership. And I was talking to another board member and I was like, man, we, we need doc, you know, it's like, we, we have, we, we, we need somebody right now that will come in and be that, that alpha dog type leader because, because we, we haven't had it in a little bit. We need to get it back. And I didn't call doc, but that, that MBBA board mayor, I'll leave his name out, but he ends up calling doc and talking doc into it. He's like, yeah, I got doc to run. It's like, all right, you did. It wasn't an original idea. Can I get like a little bit of credit <laughs> you for you making the call? Yeah. It wasn't your idea. <laughs> but yeah, um, yeah. And, and he did come back in, and I felt like he he right away jumped right back in and gave us strong leadership again. Didn't he also, Michael, um, serve time as first vice president and maybe even second vice president? He came out. Oh, he was on the board before he became uh, uh, president. He jumped right in leadership uh, right after we, right after he joined our team. He jumped right into national leadership. Jumped right in there with because uh, uh, he butted head with John Ross and Jim Mastro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he did. He he did butt heads with John Ross, and they disagreed on a lot of stuff. But ultimately, uh, before John passed away. Uh, they became real close and and I think um, developed a, a real friendship. And I think each one um, admired the other for their contributions, you know, to the game. Yeah. yeah. One yeah. of the toughest one of the toughest things he had to do, though, was because I think at one point I think he must have followed Mastro as president. Yeah, that's right. And I believe so. Jim. Jim was was doing a lot of studying because he was he was down here in Texas and we didn't even know it for a while uh, studying at TWU and he he ended up uh, get, getting pushed off of the board as immediate past president because he wasn't showing up for meetings and he wasn't letting everybody know that that you know he was really busy doing his studying and so. <laughs> Under under Doc's reluctant leadership, the board said, "Okay, Jim, you got to step down as immediate past president." <laughs> yeah, I'm sure that wasn't probably well received by uh, by a lot of the MBBA or whatever. It wasn't, but we had to follow the rules. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah. for those that don't know, it's a, it's been a long standing rule since before I got involved, where um, if you're an MBBA uh, board member. Um, after two unexcused absences, um, you, you could be removed from your position. So, it really all it means is if, if you're not going to be there, you know, check in with the president, the rest of the board, let them know what you're doing. And normally, it wouldn't be, <laughs> normally it wouldn't be a problem. So, but I could understand that being a, a, a definite, you know, a, a tough way for a new president to kind of start their uh, their, their regime with, you know, another like player who is one of the like founding fathers, I believe, uh, Master yeah. was. So, yeah. yeah. Well, there were two. I won't say factions, but there were two groups of people. I was on the board, and I don't even remember how long I was on, but for what year. It was in the early, mid-'80s. But there was what I would say the old guard and the new guard. And the old guard was the BS, the Minnesota folks and, and the ones who you know kind of started the game. And like I said, when Beatball exploded in Texas, I got elected. I think Michael did, Doc did, probably um, – I don't know if Scooter Hudson got on then, but 
you know, there were there was a lot of new blood coming into the to the association, and I think some of the old people were saying, "Wait a minute, this is going too fast," you know. <laughs> but you know, I it, just, it worked out. I don't, I don't think it's like any. I, I feel like beatball, as long as I've been around, it's always been like that. Like those that have been around the game for a long time, they're kind of, uh, you know what I mean? Like stuck in, in, in the way. Set in their way. Yeah, set, set in their way. ways and wanting to kind of keep the game going. And the younger players like, no, we need to try this and that. So I I feel like they're, they're still that uh, kind of division and probably always will be as long as. The, yeah goes but that's what you know that's where new ideas and new new attempts and all that come from well, well that was one of the things i always admired about doc though and and i said that you know in the, in his in his service doc was always coming up with solutions to problems he always had a he always had a, a thought it might not have been the best solution but when everybody else was saying what are we going to do he would always come up with something to do, you know, un- until until we got got to the right direction that we needed to go in. But he, he was always the guy that would come up with some kind of solution. Sometimes it was the best solution, but sometimes <laughs> it was a stopgap too, you know. Yeah, uh, yeah. Now, you know, uh, it really, uh, I guess, for me, says how much I respected his leadership because, again, um, like he and I didn't always agree with each other or whatever, but something that stands out to me as far as my own personal path in beatball, because when I first got on the board in 1989, I was 21. And honestly, I just thought it would be, I, it was my ego that wanted to be there. I was an empty chair. I didn't, you know, I had a couple friends from here in California, Dave Horn and Pete Conasani who were mm-hmm. on the board and uh, they are 10 years plus older than me so I was kind of just following them <laughs> around and anything they voted on I you know what I mean I, was, yeah, I had no yeah. original participation but I, I, I tried to I, I, you know as I got a little bit older I, I definitely tried to change that and uh, something that has always stood out to me like as far as when I felt like I really belonged was when Doc started pulling me aside in between meetings, after meetings, and 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 speaking to me about like ideas I had and whatever, you know what I mean? It's like he, like yeah. I, when like he he when I felt like I earned Doc's respect, I I felt like I was really like a part of the pattern, or you know what I mean? Like I was really a yeah. member in in being part of it because you know like all of a sudden doc was pulling me aside after meeting and shaking my hand and thanking me for contributions or whatever and man that 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 meant the world to me because again when i came into the sports like you know doc doc was bigger in life in this game like everybody yeah. knew him. anybody who was important in this game was, was talking to doc you know about the game or whatever and i, I just remember he just seemed so big when i was at my first world series he was big when you ran into him on the field too. yeah right no he's a big guy i remember like he and boy dickie would swing those big 37 <laughs> 38 ounce bats man yeah yeah big guys uh, one time yeah, there, there's with, a picture i, I always wondered pic- about that with the story of him being hung out the window <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah well yeah, my dad had- had my dad and our bad. pitcher, Mark, but they were both over six two, six three, and each one of them weighed over two hundred pounds. So it was no big deal for them to hang, to hang Doc out the window. That gives me the heebie-jeebies just thinking about that. <laughs> oh, you, you guys are crazy. Man, well, I, uh, and, and, and tell you, I tell you another thing about Doc. Yeah. <laughs> he, he was like Ronnie says. He very, con- very competitive, and very tough. We had a. We had a, a mini tournament with Austin, San Antonio, and and uh, they came that Saturday here, and Doc came over there, and he's walking around limping and going on. We're going, to, Doc, what's, what's the matter? He said, oh, I dropped something on my foot. And he wrapped his foot up, stuck that shoe on. It turns out he had a broken foot. Oh my God! <laughs> but he played. He he played 
Oh, I don't know how many games we played that day. You remember, Ronnie? Gosh, I don't remember. Probably I remember there was but a Fort Worth tournament we played. He, he played oh, yeah. all day yeah. with a broken foot. With a broken foot, yeah. Scored and well, of course, <laughs> back in the old days, in, in the early in the seven, early days, we had our bases were terrible, and they were concrete. They were lodged in concrete buckets. And if you hit the base wrong, the base would fly up anyway and land on your toe. And I think he had that happen to him once or twice, you know. It, but he was he he was really uh, he was really competitive. I got, I I mean, I, I, hold on, I got I got to get clarification. What do you mean the bases were? Yeah, I know that the bases it, back it, then it, had some kind of really bucket. solid bottom to them because uh, yeah. I, yeah. I know that there was a case here in California with the the league, uh, the California league before Seth and I got in it, where a kid under eighteen like busted his knee really bad on one of those, uh, and, and like his family sued the the California league or whatever. They mm. they didn't win the like suit or whatever, but I mean they they went after the league because it it ruined his knee. What? How were the bases made back then? I there were several different patterns i think some of them and i think different people made their bases different ways it was there was no uniformity that's another thing we got going finally that doc was involved in as much as any anybody was and when we came up i say we the people came up with materials to make bases that were lighter yet would stand up you know to a wind blowing yeah Yeah. um we even had such crude bases where where you You'd stuff them in like a, a plastic trash can. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and put that solid bottom around them. That that mm-hmm. that was yeah. a hard base to hit too. <laughs> well, Boy, yeah. like how yeah, big of were. a how big of a trash can are you talking, Mike? Well, you know, like a, a about a, a kitchen, you know, round kitchen trash can kind of thing. It didn't come up all <laughs> the way. Then you know, would the, put that into a concrete base. I mean, or you would you would anchor. <clears throat> that that would be the anchor, or would there where there be other weight that was added to that? Yeah, I think that's where the concrete was in some of them. <laughs> yeah, in the bottom. And I think some of them, some people even had sand, you know, for in the bottoms of their bases, and then the the top of the base would be stuffed inside. You know, they tried to make who the top thinks of them that's a good? Softer. Who would think it's, that's a good idea? Sand I mean, makes I, I, you more know what I mean? sense. Sand <laughs> makes more sense than the concrete did. Yeah, like, I, yeah. I have to go with Seth on that line. Like, like uh, uh, how how could any group of people think? All right, we're gonna let blind people run at concrete. <laughs> They're not safe unless they go through that concrete. Yeah, they, yeah. They, yeah. They well, you know, the idea, hopefully. Oh, go ahead, my turn. The idea, hopefully, is to reach out and touch the base with your hand before you kick it. You know, and of course, I didn't run fast enough to have anything to worry about anyway. <laughs> what do you say, Michael? I said, I guess they thought it's only a little, you know, at the bottom. Yeah, of it. yeah just, you know, just you a little bit of cement. Yeah, yeah, you won't hurt you that much. You know. uh, so the, oh. the idea was, you know, to run and hit the base, not not tackle it like, you know, we started teaching after, after the bases got a little safer. We started teaching guys run into the base because you'd run by it and you'd miss it. If you reached out, mm-hmm. so so after they got a little safer, we we started to <laughs> teach guys. You, you run directly to the sound. I gotta say, I kind I kind of on one level side with those parents. <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you know, you talk about the level of sight that each of you had when you lost it. When we first started playing with Doc, he had, of course, retinitis pigmentosa. He could see a little bit, and he one of the things he loved to do as a, as a player, um, he loved to stand on the opposite side, like if I was a right-handed batter, and he'd stand on the left side of the plate and watch people swing. Because he could still see enough to see your swing if yes. the sun was out and, you know, it was, it was, it was good. He tried to help coach um, people swing. Did the pitchers he even, like that? Most pitchers would hate that, I think, if a player was well, standing there working uh, on the timing. Yeah, but it, it what 
course, with me and there were some other people, you know, you, one of the things you had to, to think of when you were thinking of the science of hitting, you had to get the batters to be able to swing in the same spot every time, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. develop the same kind of swing, you know, yeah, yeah. and that was different, you know. And once that got done, then you kind of worry about, okay, you know, the pitcher can work on the timing. But, mm. I, of course, I remember our pitcher yelling at me one time, I hit a ball and scored – and he grabbed me after I hit the base, and he says, that was the worst pitch I've ever thrown, and you hit it. So your swing wasn't any better than my pitch. <laughs> Michael, you know, when, Doc, did, Doc was, when did Doc, Doc stop coming to did the World Series? Hmm. We were talking about been that with the other day. I think yeah. it was probably about – about 2011 or so. 2011 in Indianapolis was that? I know he was there yeah. in Indianapolis. Was that the last one he was at? I believe that was. <clears throat> I think I don't know because I quit going in '96. I think the last one I went to was Sacramento, and I don't I remember when that was. That. Sacramento that was '99. But I ran that into you. I know you were out visiting, Ron. Either. I know yeah. the, the, the tournament was in Houston in 05 and 08. I know. I yeah, I, I went whenever it was in Houston. Yeah. And yeah. I wanted to go to Tulsa, you know, when it was there, but I, I didn't get to make it because I, I wanted to go and I've operated, I operated bases, um, you know, at yeah. a couple of the Houston tournaments because um, yeah. I always wanted to do, do, uh, and that's the other thing. Doc used to complain about some of the people. He used to complain about some of the complaints that, fielders and players had no no I know. And that's everybody one of the things he and i never agreed to. like his he had a big thing about players asking for new balls and like on the dogs like we we lived on defense and you know we yeah. didn't have a good pitcher we won championships with our defense and anytime <laughs> a ball didn't sound good to us we asked for a new one a doc it make him mad as hell especially when he's <laughs> president over standing on the sideline we can't afford to go through all these balls <laughs> and like yeah. he, he thought we should do you know of course he had a great pitcher he didn't have to worry about a bad ball they were gonna score yeah. runs we needed to hold the yeah. score down so yeah no, I, he I um he had his pet peeves we used to complain about he used to complain about ba the way people complained about late bases too you yeah. know and and i even complained i remember i, I operated a base uh, operated bases once between a game between houston and boston and some of these cats wanted the base in my opinion, they wanted the base turned on before the bat hit the ball. And I'm thinking, you can't do that, you know. Yeah. And, and that's that's become a trend that's happening now with all these sighted, even sighted base operators. They turn the base on before the ball even crosses the plate. Right. And see, I wasn't a good hitter. I wasn't a good hitter, and as a defensive player, I felt that gave the hitter too much of an advantage, even if it only gives you one step, you know. Yeah. Um, I, I want the base. When the bat hits the ball, and that's why as a base operator, whenever I've done it, I've tried to hit the, you know, I listen. As a blind, of course, I couldn't see, so ready, ball, and bam. And I would turn the base on just as the bat hit the ball, and I, was, I felt when I was good at it. Of course, some of these pitchers, um, they were hard to get their timing down, so. You know, to, I, I always and, felt like a lot of something that frustrated me as a player is I always felt like a, a, there are a lot of good hitters that every time they just like hit the top of the ball and knock a little 45 footer out there, they'd always say late base and hopes to get a new yeah. <laughs> and a lot of the volunteer base operators. Cause the umpire is not always paying attention. The umpire mm -hmm. will go ask the operators like, was it late? They're like, I, I don't know. So they don't fight it. You know what I mean? If I'm a base yeah, operator, yeah. I'm like, hell no, it wasn't late. It was one right. It was yeah. one <laughs> late. That's, that's what I always, that's what I always told him. No, it wasn't late. Yeah. You know? <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, we could easily like tell stories all day long. Uh, you know, I, I, I guess uh, one reason that I, you know, I, uh, we've lost a lot of people in the last year and, and, you know, I've never thought to do like a tribute to anybody, but for me personally, Doc was different. Um, like he, he's 
there are things that I still dream about being in, in our league that he, he covered all of it. Like I said, he's a Jim Quinn award winner. I'd be proud to be that someday. He's a hall of famer. I'd be proud to be that someday. He's a, been the president of the league and did, did a good job with that. And I, I'd be proud to do that someday too. He's just done a lot of the things like I've, I've been dreaming about this sport since I, I found it. And, uh, he, he did all the things that, uh, like if somebody just loves the league that, that I, I would love to, to do still someday. I don't know. I just, just want to salute the man. I mean, he, uh, whether you liked him or not, agreed with him or not, that dude dedicated a chunk of his life to this sport. Yeah, he, he really did. He, he, he loved him. And I, I think of course, if he were alive, you know, I mean, he played as long as he could, you know, he, yeah. he got to the point where he just couldn't, couldn't play anymore. Yeah. And, uh, of course, he coached, and, and, you know, he thought he was a good coach, both, too, which he was. Both he and I had, this, had the same uh, desire, and we said that we were going to stick around until we won a championship. And so even though he, he, he retired from playing, he came out, he helped coach, he helped fundraise, and he came to, to, to the series – and he was sitting over there on the sidelines when uh, when we won our, our our championship. And of course, that was that was that was my last year as a starter <laughs> playing. But 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 that was that was our dream. We were we were we were, we weren't going to leave the game until we until we won a championship. Yeah, That's I remember kinda... that. That's kind of a sour subject for Seth and I because you know we're on the team that just won three championships, and you guys, it was your, it was your team that put it into it in two thousand two. <laughs> yeah, I remember that game. I remember that game. Well, you know, you talk 10. about Doc's involvement yeah. on the on the board, 10, Neil. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Eleven yeah. to ten. That was a, that was a heck of a game. Well, that's about yeah. Great memories from him. Great memories. Yeah, yeah. yeah. What were you going to say, Ron? One of the things that Doc was real insistent about, and he would get disappointed, he wanted participate. You know, there's a lot of players when they start playing the game, they just go and they play. They don't. And he really was insistent on trying to get team players involved in the nuts and bolts of the league operation. And he would, you know, really get on everybody on our teams. You know, Come on, we're we're having the general meeting. You know, everybody <laughs> needs to go to the meeting and vote. And there's so many that didn't want to do it. You know, and we didn't, there was no way to punish anybody for they didn't do it. But he, and of course, ultimately, you know, you get your two or three that are going to get involved, and because of that, and stay involved. But. Right. Now Seth could tell you I that that was like I was that person for our team. You know what I mean? It's uh going into almost every World Series because I was part of the board and I you know I was always at the meetings or whatever. Uh, it's like a, like our coach would always want to have a practice during General Assembly. It's like man, come yeah, on, right, guys. Can't do that to me. They're yeah. always asking ahead of time. Is there anything like important, any rule that we're gonna care about that we gotta vote on? Do we have to go? It's like, man, come on. Of course, the one thing that would get people going to the meetings was if we had somebody, if you had somebody running for a, a board position. Yeah. Come on, we got to You know, yeah. you got to get everybody vote. down there so we can get so and so elected. You know. All right. As soon as, all the, as was, soon as all the voting was over, the room would just empty. Everybody yeah, was yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. And now we don't even vote at General Assembly. Yeah. So I'm sorry. Oh, really? Yeah. I'm, per I'm personally not a big fan of that. <laughs> no. I know Seth is it. Seth's totally against it. <laughs> totally. Uh, I, I'm not. I'm not either. It, 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 it takes out. It takes away from the. You know, we can't do run people from the floor of course of course that year that you had about 20 people running so that that kind of <laughs> changed <laughs> yeah, but the one I, time the I've one always, time there was one time one i've time. always felt like it's an overreaction to change things because like totally uh -huh. Reinvent the wheel because yeah one bad yeah i honestly my own feeling was that one time 
didn't have really good like nobody was strong arming the situation not like uh, uh, from the board position nobody just uh, put their uh, foot down uh, and made sure that you know things happen the way it should happen or whatever and so instead of uh you know appointing somebody who will take that position they reinvent the wheel or whatever but what i really don't like now is like general assembly whether you like it or not you know i know it's long and tedious and, and <laughs> Just there's no there's nothing to entice people to it, but that's the only time the league had discussion on changes. Right. You know what I mean? That's the only right. time yeah. that anybody and everybody has an opportunity to jump in and talk about the changes that are are being discussed, and doing it on conference calls and you know what I mean, giving teams individual votes. It just isn't the same. Like a, I, I totally agree with that. Even I, I mean, we have digressed, but even yeah. in that year that we had those 20, 20 people, that, that was the year that the, uh, I got the, the, the late based, late based rule changed. It's no longer a, a complete new count, right? <laughs> it's just a, a, right, like a, a, a no just pitch. Like a, like a dead pitch or whatever. Yeah, yeah it's a dead yeah. pitch, mm -hmm. but, oh. but that never would have gotten i mean when i when it was when it was introduced on the floor you could hear everybody like no 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 and i mean i got up and i spoke on it and i kind of laid out the arguments and, and you could see i changed people's minds but that never would have happened if we weren't all together discussing it right and so you know things broke down once we started nominating people but but the the, the, the meeting and the, the voting process had worked as it as it should have before that and so you know i'm always against you know re overreacting to one situation yeah. <laughs> but but you know we digress we digress it's here to celebrate yeah. doc bradley <laughs> hey you know uh yeah. Yeah. michael before we wrap things up i i, I owe you an apology <laughs> Yo, Wait, what's one, that? one of the things that we did here on the beatball blue show a few months ago is we played beat baseball jeopardy and one of our categories was um, MBBA presidents from the Houston franchise. And so obviously, you know, you, Blake Boudreau and, and Doc were the answers to the question, but out of all the categories, I don't remember what we, what we did in total. Three categories. <laughs> three now, there categories, are, there three are six, questions. six, there are six <laughs> okay, categories because there, there are two, two rounds. rounds. <laughs> yeah. But, <laughs> I, I failed to close out to make sure I was because I was the host uh, 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 of the show uh, or the game, I mean, and I failed to make sure that that category got closed out. And the question I never got answered was uh, the, the Michael Garrett question. So I I, uh, I failed the game and I, I left you out, Michael. I apologize. What, was that, what would that question have been? I'm uh, I, and I'm not saying it right because it's Jeopardy. I'm not a Jeopardy fan, but I actually was <laughs> yeah. going to lay out, and, and it's appropriate since February is Black History Month. I um, was going to lay out that this uh, NBA NBBA president uh, was the first black president of the league, and, and to this point, um, still the only black. <laughs> That's the <laughs> first. <laughs> That's pretty presumptuous. Well, now, you girl. could really be. <laughs> You could really be comical about that, and it's just, well, gosh, I'm blind. I didn't know we had a black president. <laughs> but hey, so Michael, that... what, what, Michael, why I have you here, just for the record, I know you and I have discussed this before. When you changed the 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 the, the Houston Bombers name to the Bayou City Heat, did you take that name Bayou City um, from the dogs, from our, from how good the West Coast sound? You, you, you like that, right? And, and and is that how I understand no, actually, you came I, up I, with that name I, of the I Bayou didn't do City? it. Oh, you I did? didn't do it. I didn't. I didn't change the name. It was it, it, that was the other. That was the other other guys. Oh, okay. I, I, I right. wasn't. I wasn't against it. But Bayou City West. How did? What did that have to do with the? Yeah, the I don't. Even, I don't even know where he's going with that. No, yeah, it, it, our it, it's, name a, it's, a discuss, it's a discussion we, uh, that that I brought up with Michael before that <laughs> that mm. I, I, be, I believe that mm. he was like, oh man, I really liked how that sounds because I've always liked the Bayou City how that sounds, and I've always <laughs> well, our original like, name we, was we, the Bio we, Bombers. We, we kind of inspired that. 
that change on the heat. But <laughs> and I didn't know if I could get Michael on the record to say that the, the West Coast actually inspired that 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 change to 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 the cooler name of Bayou City because we all now, love that name. Now, Bayou now City. we Boy. we're we're always Bayou because we have so many bayous in in Houston. Yeah, you know, we were uh, bio bombers. I, 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 had a, I had a discussion not too far back with Darnell Booker uh, because, you know, he's been running the the Thunder for a long time. They've gone to, I don't know, like 20 straight tournaments now or something. And um, he was asking me about franchises, uh, like it, wondering outside of like the Austin Blackhawks, like what other franchises have had long runs. I'm like, well, you got to throw Houston in there. And he was under the impression when you guys changed the name from the Houston Bombers to the Bayou City Heat, that it was like a different team. But that was that's the same franchise, right? I mean, uh, oh. it was just a team yeah. name, correct? Definitely. Just yeah, that was the same same bunch. So, I wasn't on the team then, but that was the same bunch. It was, I've been, it was I've contiguous. Been this, uh, I've been with this team, like I said, I started it since since, since Holly gave me the, gave me the the first the, draft pick, the dra- first first draft pick. So yeah, I've been with the team since 1978. And the only reason Michael picked me as the first player is because there was a guy that. I was coming to practice with a sighted guy, a friend of mine, and he loved baseball. We we on we got baseball tickets together for the Astros for years, and Michael finally told me. He said, "You know why I picked you?" And I said, "Why?" He says, "Because I knew if I picked you on my team, that Ken would come along as a coach." <laughs> <laughs> I said, well, thanks a lot, buddy. <laughs> Who's your second pick, Michael? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. That's a good point. I, I, <laughs> it was so long ago. I was just. We I, had I so just, many I just knew changes. I knew Ronnie. <laughs> yeah. And I don't know who the other team, of course, I know. The lady that picked the name for our team, the first, the Bio Bomber name, was, remember Michael, Martha? Martha Addison? Martha Addison, yeah. And she picked the name out for the team. And then, of course, but the bio yeah, bombers, a, Houston bombers, and the Bayou City Heat. That's the. Well, now we uh, we never were Houston bombers. I don't know where they oh. where they. We, yeah, I don't we know. Put, I always thought you guys were the Houston. Bombers. Yeah, I did too. What were mm-hmm. you no, guys? No, we put uh, we put Houston at the bottom of the the little tail on our on our shirt. Right. It said Houston, but the top was Bayou Bayou bombers. Really. Yeah, because yeah. I, I always thought it was Houston. I I, I yeah. never thought it was the Bayou. We all refer to Bombers. you as Houston. I never refer yeah. to you as Bayou. I even since you've been the Bayou City Heat, I still call you right. Houston. <laughs> and a lot of a lot of, a lot of people do. But before Bayou City Heat, I I never I don't remember like it, any of the banquets or anything. I don't remember you guys yeah. being referred to as anything other than Houston. That's great. Yeah, well that. That was people's identity because they wouldn't know who Bayou. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Which Bayou was it? Uh, well, I remember the first in the in the Wichita tournament in '79. We were playing BSF in the finals, and all the folks in the stands started cheering. You know, Houston, Houston. Of course, back you know, we were Bio City. We were Bio Bombers, Bio Bombers. But they just start would start. Cheering whenever we'd score a run or get up to hit, they'd say, Houston, Houston, Houston. You know, so it, the Houston moniker you know, our, is always on shirts, there. On our jerseys, the S in Bombers, you know, that tail that comes, we yeah. we had a design where it would come all the way across. And and inside of that, that tail was the word Houston. Oh, that's funny. Uh, I, I have truly learned something new. Yeah, I think, two of us. I, I we both have. my whole thing about yeah. the West, Bayou City or the West Coast, you know, because <laughs> I always thought you changed it from Houston to Bayou City. I did not realize it was always Bayou. That, that's interesting. I give you guys a little history on us. You know why we were the West Coast dogs instead of the California dogs? Why? Hmm. Because uh, when we st- when we changed our name to the West Coast Dogs, uh, really we started the West Coast Dogs. 
um, was when they had started doing the long ball in the fastest runner contest. And, and Seth knew he'd be hitting for us in the long ball contest. And if we are West Coast, he would be the last one to go up. <laughs> Rather than be one of the first if we were the oh. California dog. That's literally why the guy pushed so hard for West Coast. <laughs> that, that, oh, that, wow. That, 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 that is not. You, you guys that know, is I, true. You guys know, I, oh, I, you wow. guys know I, I came from the East Bay Blaze, right? And so I, just, I pushed West Coast because I thought it sounded better than California. So, yeah. I but do it was agree. good. I do agree that it sounds better than California <laughs> dogs. California dogs almost makes us sound like the California raisin like commercials. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What's a California dog? They don't <laughs> smell that here. <laughs> uh, well, gentlemen, I really appreciate you guys taking out time, and I, you know, I hope we did a good job of kind of giving the MBBA uh, or, or the audience that we do have kind of an overview of of Doc, and not just Doc, but you guys. I mean, you guys were pioneers of this league, also. Right. You know, coming up in the when the, near when the game began. You know, you guys shared stories of it. Seth and I, we've been around over thirty years, didn't know. I could have shared a couple more stories about Doc, but some of them might not have been uh, G-rated. <laughs> <laughs> well, is there is there anything you guys want to say before we head out the door? You know the Any last thoughts. Well, I, I just you? I just I just want to say that you know uh, you know I I knew Doc since '79, and you know we became. We became really good friends and uh, real close. And not only from beat ball, you know, Doc and Linda and I traveled all around this country, you know, yeah. between beat baseball and ACB. And so, uh, you know, we were, he was a, he was a uh, really close friend. And, uh, you know, we, we, we did a lot of things together and, and, uh, had a lot of great times together too. Yeah, that's I'll echo that. And Doc, <clears throat> of course, and I knew each other before uh, each of us married our present wives. And uh, you know, uh, of course, now with his passing, uh, my wife Kathy and Linda are are closer than ever now. And uh, you know, it's just and. He's just been a good friend. He helped me, you know, with my family and and all that. And of course, he's also, you know, you talk about beat baseball. Doc's also been very big in the American Council of the Blind. Yeah. And of course, was a president of the Houston Council for a number of times, and and helped to organize a ACBT. So I mean, he's just been an organizer and a leader, and like I said, a friend, a good friend. Yeah, big big member of the blind community, not just the people. Absolutely, absolutely. Right. Big big right. member of the blind community, and a hell of a chiropractor. <laughs> I don't know. I never let him. Uh, oh, you never let him. Well, adjustments. No, no. <laughs> more, probably more, just because I never was looking for. I didn't avoid it. I just have never, uh, never, never went looking for an adjustment. But uh, I'll, 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 I will take your word for it. I can tell you a quick story about that. We. Our uh, pitcher, Mark, was uh, our original pitcher. Was he'd complain every now and then about you know, oh my shoulder hurts or my neck hurts or whatever. And Doc would say, well, Mark, let me adjust you. No, 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 I don't, I don't want to do that. I don't want to do that. And of course, he would work on any of on any of us, you know, from time to time if we had a little something go wrong. And uh, one time, Mark did let Doc work on him. And after that, man, it didn't matter. We could all be standing in line waiting for Doc, and Mark would just come up and push us all out of the way. <laughs> Sorry, this is my Doc. <laughs> you want me to pitch? If you want me to pitch to you, you get out of the way. <laughs> <laughs> Made a believer out of the man. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. 
Well, no, I, I don't know. You know, Michael, you talking about like the long history you guys had. Oh, both of you talking about that. But you, Michael, talking about you and, and, and Doc and Linda traveling around together. And, you know, I, I mean, Seth and I, honestly, from afar, we, we envied that as the dogs uh, struggled and, and we were having a hard time keeping the team together or whatever. We we envied how, how you and Doc, we never gave Ronnie any credit. I don't, we, don't, we didn't know yeah. what he was doing for the the team but we, we yeah. were really envied how you and doc kept kept that houston franchise just going for years and years and we we uh and i i, I know that uh, we were disappointed not to have been a at times not to have been able to to put up the same fight you guys did to keep keep your team going we well, had to because we you franchise because we were both competitors and we love the game so we we just we put we put all we had in I, I don't know how we got to Ithaca in uh in 87 but I mean I, I, mean, I do know but but it, it, you're it drinking a lot back then Michael no, <laughs> no it just back a million years I had quit I'd quit by then but I'm, Michael's but, like 90 years old Seth. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, right. but, and, uh, Michael hardly drank at all I, 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 was, I was to, I totally am yeah. joking. I can't I even imagine really Michael drinking. Yeah, right. totally, <laughs> totally, well, totally, totally. that'll be well, a, that's another story I can tell you about that. He drank once at one tournament. <laughs> Go ahead. <Mike. laughs> he he drank at one tournament and uh, he came up the next day. It was a championship game of a tournament we were playing in San Antonio, and he told our pitcher. He said, "No, Mark." He said, you got to hit me on the first pitch. Because he said, if I swing and miss the ball, I don't know if I'll be able to, to make it. He got, five, he got, I think, five hits that day all on the first pitch. <laughs> You know, it's something that beatball players have backwards. They always think it, they need to party the night before the championship. Yeah. <laughs> <after. Yeah. laughs> <laughs> Well, gentlemen, I really appreciate you guys taking time out and helping us out with this. It was fun getting caught up with you guys. A couple of pioneers of our game. I really appreciate your time. Thanks for considering me, and I'm, I'm thanks Michael for considering me because I wasn't sure he would have done it. You know, <laughs> but um, uh, I, and I sure hope thank that you there's a tournament for, this year. Yeah. yeah. Uh, thank you, thank you, Neil, for thanks, Neil, thinking yeah. of us, and 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 thank you for the tribute to Doc. Absolutely, absolutely, definitely. You know, definitely. Uh, you you mentioned Ronnie uh, about hoping the tournament goes on this year. You, I, I didn't, I, I wasn't aware until uh, you start talking about it because the 2021 tournament is scheduled to be in Wichita, Kansas, and I oh, was really? thinking that it was being held there for the first time. But now I'm hearing that it's been there before. <clears throat> I don't remember what the name of the field was, but it was held in '79 on their on their uh, minor league baseball field. All right, yes, yeah, so that was that was fun. We learned all kinds of stuff. All kinds of things. All kinds of stuff. Show. Now, if only if the young people in the league had the patience to listen all the <laughs> the things they could learn, the things they could learn. Uh, everybody, everybody, tell a friend, share the show, Let's see if we can get yes. the word uh, moving around. All Very right, good. everybody. We're all all right. So it's beep, beep ball blues, right? Beep ball blues show. We started it up uh, when when the pandemic started, and really was just intended to be kind of a short term uh, virtual training course, something just to keep people occupied while the lockdown was going on, and. Almost a year later, it, it, it's still going. Now it's just more of a feature thing. Get to know new teams, new players, and see what's going on in the league. It's been a lot of fun. We just need yeah. some jazz music to make it sound like the blues are, you know, a musical <laughs> thing as opposed to a <laughs> depressing, yeah. depressing thing. <laughs> well, that, that well, was keep actually... It up, keep oh. it up. But I, I will. My, my thought with that, with the blues, though, is because I was going around thinking, like, what am I going to use for, like, intro music for the very first right. show? 
And I'm, I'm a big fan of Jeff Healy, who's a blind blues guitar player. He's no longer with us, but he, uh, Jeff Healy's a blind blues guitar player. And so I was like, mm. all right, I'm going to use some Jeff Healy music, you know, and get, bring bring some more blind aspect to it. <laughs> but, but then I realized I, I wanted to put it up on YouTube, and there's copyright stuff, so I couldn't use his oh, yeah, music I'm anyway. Great. So, uh, But, you know, <laughs> just stayed with the name of the show, and it just it, it is what it is. And we just keep rolling with it it's been a lot of fun yeah all right everybody that is it okay we will see you with something next week we appreciate everybody listening rest in peace dr ed bradley